Hi folks, welcome back for our very last episode of the Spring 2020 Encourage the Heart interviews, interviews to inspire you. I'm excited today to have Kathy Lee with me. She'll introduce herself in a few minutes, um, but I want to start by telling you a little bit about why Student Life decided to do the Encourage the Heart video series. Um, it's part of our campaign called Cultivate What Matters. Um, we as a staff in Student Life really believe that the best things are cultivated little by little. Um, we come to work every day really focused on the mission of helping you as college students figure out what matters to you right now, right where you're at. Because at the end of the day, this really isn't about us, it's about your journey. It's about you figuring out what's my story, what are my hopes, my goals, and what fires me up. We can't wait to cheer you on on this journey of cultivating what matters in your life right where you're at right now. So at this time, I would love for my conversation partner, Kathy, to introduce herself. Kathy, tell us a little bit about what you're studying at CU Denver, um, what you're involved in, anything else you'd like to share. So hello, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Kathy Lee. I'm a third year at CU Denver and I'm majoring in biology and I'm also minoring in ethnic studies. I am very involved on campus. I have been since my freshman year. Currently this year alone, I served on four officer positions. So I was the co-chair of the Council of Asian Student Leaders. I was the president for InterVarsity. I was also the secretary for CBL, the Filipino Student Association. And I'm the current co-president for Minority Association Pre-Health Students. And I also work for a program called CoYAM, which is pretty much a STEM program where I help reach out into the STEM community and just organize workshops and seminars to encourage students that work within this field to gain some leadership experience, some tips and tricks on interviews, how to prepare for like grad schools, med schools, any tips and tricks like that through my work on campus. Kathy, you are so involved. Is that balanced well with your academics? I definitely try to prioritize my academics over my clubs for sure. And I know that I have amazing officer teams and like supporters to help me out. So whenever I feel like I have too much on my plate and I need to step down, I'll let someone know immediately. That way I can take less off of, on my plate and focus on my academics. That is good to hear. But it also sounds like you probably get a lot out of your involvement. For sure. Yeah. All right. Well, let's jump into our interview questions. Our first one is talk to us a little bit about what's important to you right now. I think right now with this whole virtual staying at home, being quarantined, I personally want to keep the connections I have as if I were to have on campus. So that's still having regular like Zoom call meetings with maybe some of my officer teams to like, check up on, hey, let's try to plan for next year. But also just like connecting with like my classmates. So still having like some Zoom study groups to make sure we're on the right track. Um, and then we also have some fun too. So we plan some movie nights. So that's also really important to just like also have a break within classes. So I think really what's more important to me right now is just making sure I keep my connections that I already have established and especially we're, we're virtual right now and being an extrovert is so hard. <laughs> and it's, it's been rough, but we're definitely adjusting to it. So I think keeping the people that have been close to me, like on, you know, on campus, digitally is important to me right now. Yeah, absolutely. I know I've been doing a lot of um, phone calls with people, um, folks that I might have checked in with once a month, but now I'm checking in more often. Um, and so, yeah, you're right. Connections are super important right now. Yeah, networking right. is very important. So our next question is um, really about laughter. You know, part of being encouraged, um, and especially in, in an unusual time period like we have right now, um, laughter often gets us through the day. So is there anything that's making you laugh right now? I think, again, it relates back to like, what's important to me like with the people um we've definitely had zoom calls where we can just goof off especially we play games like scriblio which is like an online pictionary game oh. or i've taught my friends how to use the zoom whiteboard feature and so i start like a game of hangman and we just take turns and then people are just making me laugh by like telling jokes or showing a lot of memes it's just a lot of variety of ways to, you know, stay connected and just like have a good time to laugh on top of everything that's happening. Awesome. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of uh, trivia games with friends for sure. I'm going to have to check out that whiteboard um, idea. 
So, you know, um, one of the things I've been talking about with the folks that we've been interviewing is about people in our lives that encourage us. Um, I know I recently received a card in the mail, just a random thank you card from one of my oldest friends um, because she'd been struggling with something. And like, I literally was on a three hour phone call and just let her vent. She needed to do that. She also lives alone, you know, and so because we're kind of isolated, um, you know, it was encouraging to her that I just listened. And so then I got a thank you card. Um, those, those pieces of encouragement are important to us. And so I want you to think back on all the people that have encouraged you somehow in your life. Is there someone in your past that's encouraged you, you could tell us a story about and how they have supported you? So I think back in high school, I played on the tennis team all four years. And so it was a new sport to me. Like back in middle school, I started on the volleyball team and I'm like, I don't want to continue this in high school. So maybe we can try a new sport. And so definitely the coaches that I've had in high school have definitely been encouraging, especially since I was new to the sport. Like I have no skill level. And then like, there's obviously players that are very more experienced than I am. So I thought I'm like, oh, I'm not good enough for the team or I'm not going to make like varsity or I shouldn't even try out. But I think like the coaches, like during practices, they would help me encourage to like, like keep trying, keep practicing like work on my serve, work on my form, just give me all these like tips and tricks to continually like push myself and get more experience in the sport. And so now I play it for the CU Denver tennis team. So it's been like my favorite sport ever since. And everything I've learned from them, I've been able to like learn and um, just apply into tennis now at CU Denver. So if you were to call one of those coaches, what would you say to them right now, now that you're a couple years later and you're still applying their advice and encouragement? I think I would just tell them thank you right now. If it weren't for them, I wouldn't be the strong player I am right now. And I just for encouraged me to even like try the sport, even though I've had no experience in the past. And you can do anything you want to do if you just set your right mindset to it and have the right people to encourage you. So I just want to tell them all thank you for that. Awesome. Well, I would encourage you to do that if you can figure out a way to do that. Maybe it's a card in the mail. Maybe it's an email. Um, but I think sometimes people need to know that that those, you know, pieces of wisdom are heard. So when you think about yourself, um, you know, we grow constantly and I often will reflect once a month what I learn about myself in the last month. So that's my question for you next. What have you learned about yourself in the last kind of four weeks? I think it's, again, been really hard adjusting to the remote life in general, how especially the finish line is right there. We only have like one and a half weeks left till the semester's over. So I think within the past month, it's definitely been hard learning how to time manage, especially being a bio major. I took on five science classes on campus, let alone now two, two, uh, two of them are labs and now they're all remote. So it's definitely been a hard adjustment with time management because I'm like okay I know most of them I can still log on the zoom calls and like attend my professor's lectures and I can still attend their office hours and go to tutoring but it's definitely been hard because it's not like a regular gym where like I sh like, commute to school I show up attend the lectures and I definitely miss that in person yeah. so being at home makes me like more you know like lazy to like hop on and like get things going but I've definitely learned that it just takes a lot of time to manage out your schedule and try to keep a regular routine as if you were to be on campus. Right. So you mentioned two things I want to follow up on. One is tutoring. Um, I know that in college, I used the tutoring center for some of the business classes I took. Mm -hmm. um, and it was the best decision I ever made. Like my grades were like one to two letter grades higher once I started going to the tutoring center. Um, and I don't know that we've had anyone in these interviews mention using that before. Can you talk us a little bit about like your experience using the tutoring center at CU Denver? Yes. Yeah, so the Learning Resource Center is an amazing source that all students should be using no matter what subject you might be struggling in. They connect you with a mentor uh, that's a student tutor that can help you on certain subjects. So I have a tutor for organic chemistry right now, mm -hmm. but I also have a tutor for cell biology for one-on-ones, but I also attend supplemental instruction, which are group tutoring sessions, and I do that for physics and for organic chemistry. So they have a lot of resources to help students advance their grades, and studies have shown that if students attend regularly, then they will score a whole letter grade higher. And I've been going to tutoring ever since my freshman year, and I definitely have seen the difference 
in dedicating time to tutoring. And it's definitely a useful skill that I recommend any student, no matter if you're a freshman or a senior, they're always there willing to help you. And so it's definitely been hard to adjust to remote tutoring, but at least I'm still thankful that we have technology to provide for tutoring. That way we can still answer our questions from the professor's lectures that we need to clarify. And it's just been really awesome, like the community that, you know, has built from tutoring as well. Wonderful. Um, the other thing you said, you, you talked about, you know, you're having to really get yourself focused, you know, with time management to manage all of this in this at home um, environment. You know, one of the things that I think that really helps is once you learn those kind of powers of concentration and focus, it really helps if you have plans to go to graduate school. And I didn't know if you planned with your science degree, do you have plans to go into graduate school? I do. Hopefully I will apply towards the end of my senior year and I want to get into MD PhD or just MD or, M or PhD programs. I'm not quite sure what my path looks like yet, but I'm also a McNair scholar. Mm -hmm. So this will help me advance my current undergrad research and apply to hopefully programs I can utilize my current research in. So I want to apply to programs like immunology or microbiome because I've always wanted to be a dermatologist growing up. Oh, wow. Good. Well, um, I, I think that maybe even though as an extrovert, as you shared, this might be a struggle to be at home like this. Maybe you're learning some skills that are going to really help you achieve those goals, being able to focus and get real directed. Yes. Well, my next question is, you know, if you knew somebody was struggling right now, what kind of encouragement would you um, offer them? I would just tell them that you are not alone. Like you have so many levels of support, whether that could be your family, it can be close friends, it can be even your neighbors or anyone else in your community. Just know that you're here on this journey. Everyone's, you know, doing this pandemic together. We're going to get through it and make sure self-care, like that's of all things is the most important. So if you're struggling right now, make sure you try to take care of yourself first before you reach out to others. Yeah, and for students listening to this that maybe don't have that strong community around them, you know, please remember that the CU Denver Counseling Center um, is doing tele um, counseling online, and so they're still here to help and support you if you need a confidential person to talk to. Um, so there's that option as well. So we're kind of at the end of our time together, and my last question um, is called One Word. Um, this is something that we do in student life often when we have um, gr big group uh, events. We'll ask folks to go around and kind of reflect on what's one word that represents what you're thinking or feeling right now. Um, and so is there one word you'd like to share with us and then tell us why? So I think my one word right now is blessed, because I'm very blessed that we have technology right now to still stay in touch with our loved ones and with our communities, especially again, being an extrovert. If we didn't have technology, I have no idea how I would connect with everyone that I know. Right. Um, so I'm also very blessed that there's just an amazing support group like all over, like within your family, within your friends, within the CU Denver community, everyone is still giving out resources like, oh, hey, there's a food pantry you can still access to. Oh, you, um, you still need tutoring, that's still available online. So all, there's all these different resources that are still offered within these different communities that people just need to like know more of. But I'm very blessed that we have all of these opportunities while still, you know, being at home. Right. I think that's a wonderful word. Thank you very much for sharing that. Kathy, it's been great to talk to you. Um, folks, we want to encourage you as we wrap up this interview to think about following our YouTube channel. Um, we wanna thank you for joining us today. Um, we'd love for you to, to subscribe. And so our channel is the CU Denver Student Life channel. And we're trying to reach 100 followers. Um, we have lots and lots of views, but we need folks to actually subscribe. Um, and so Kathy, thank you so much for joining me today, folks. We appreciate your time and hope that you'll join us online again soon. Bye.